Hello, hello, Scrapper Names fans. How are we all? So I'm back with a Challenge Tuesday video. This is the third attempt at this video. Um, for some reason, my editing software has just decided to go bonkers with this with this video um, and not work. So I would have had it up earlier today, which is Tuesday. But anyway, so what I've got here, I'm doing the White with One July Challenge, uh, which is the theme is air bubble um, or blue and it's using a blue colored on uh, with a mood board uh, so I've taken the blue uh, and I'm using in the mood board there's sort of balloons and things like that so I've taken the the circular pattern of the balloons and I'm going with that with the theme of my layout here so I've got some basil marshmallow cardstock which I haven't added extra in added any extra primer to it uh, just because I'm not adding any real heavy wet media um, I do find the basil marshmallow cardstock can still warp slightly so if I was adding really like a lot of layers of wet media I would probably add a coat of gesso just to be on the safe side so I'm just using the good old packaging technique smoosh some oxide ink onto a piece of packaging sprayed it with my little mister bottle there and just smooshing it on I'm adding a second layer here. I just decided it needed a little bit more as I wasn't sure where I was going to place my photos. So I hadn't sort of pre-planned that. So I'm just whacking it all over the page just to make sure it was visible when I decided where I was going to stick my photos. So the second layer of this um, oxide is a little bit more... Um, concentrated I guess than the first layer um, and that's fine it's all good so then I decided I'd give the go at the matte gel medium here I've just brought that oh, a couple of weeks ago and I'm only just using it um, and it's the first time I've used every obviously ever used matte gel medium but it's I wasn't sure about using it through a stencil I thought I'd give it a whirl I think I'd seen ink, the good lovely inky quill I think it was her I seen use it um, I think recently maybe anyway so I thought I'd give it a go through a stencil and see how it looked now it worked per se however because I think I have the really stark white smooth cardstock background and then the oxide ink background um, I think it was quite pale so it didn't it wasn't really like in your face visible but it did add a nice sort of soft texture look to the background when you could see it up close so you can't quite see it as well on the video um, but you can in real life so that's okay it's cool it's in the album so you can sort of see it so it adds a nice sort of soft texture to it so that's pretty cool so I decided that um, my photos needed some matting onto this background uh, and I was going to go straight off the bat with this lined pattern paper in the background now I think it is a pink paisley paper but I felt it needed the photos needed something else before a paper layer so I went with some tissue paper my poor old sad last remnant of this blue tissue paper <laughs> look at it it's ripped it's crinkled it's like the last piece left <laughs> so Anyway, so I went with this tissue paper just again, a bit more texture and a bit of softness around the photos. Um, and again, it's that blue colour that is the theme of the challenge. So that's, you know, what I'm going for. Then I made the mistake of realising that eh, it's too pale. So I love this paper, but it's not going to work. So I get out this Maggie Holmes Shine paper pad and just go through to try and find a more darker blue pattern paper and I want it patterned I didn't want a solid blue um, paper because of just because I didn't think it would look right I wanted to add a bit of life to the background I guess so I went with this one which has got the nice sort of blue and white through it uh, and I only had a thin mat to the back of this fo these photos um, just to make the tissue paper pop and the photo pop off the um, mixed media background. Oh, and I did layer the photos on some craft foam again just to give that bit of dimension off that um, the pattern paper mat as well. 
So as you can see there, there is, you can sort of see the texture there of the, um, the matte gel. Now it does take longer to dry, so if you haven't used it before, I did put it aside while I played around with my paper layers and looking at all that. So obviously I edited that out. You don't need to see all of that, but it still hadn't dried. So I did need to give it a zap for a few minutes with my heat gun. Um, and then it was dry okay. And in the end, I cover some of it up. So I did three sections, three or four sections of matte gel medium through that stencil. And then I cover half of it up with the photos anyway. So, eh, whatever. As I said, it wasn't pre-planned as to where my photos were going to go. Um, I wanted to try and put the photos in a different spot to where I usually put my photos. I sort of, so I put them down, I was either going to put them down the bottom here or I was going to put them at the top. Not in the middle, not on an angle, up or bottom, top or bottom. I, that was just me for this layout. I wanted to do something that wasn't what I usually do, if that makes sense. So yes. Now, I knew I didn't have any just straight blue circular patterned or too many embellishments so I thought I'd create my own so I have my little diamond press die cutting machine here um, which is as you can see the little pink is the um, and then I've got my little folder here it is only tiny and I'm using some plain cir circular dies as well as those scalloped ones in the different sizes and you just sort of wind it through the machine and it cuts it out. So you can see there, I'll just give you a bit of a demo. Don't worry, I don't make you watch me cut all of them. So in a minute, you will see magic. There will be Wella. Wella. Hello, editing. There it is. So I've cut out some several different sizes. I do go back and cut one more. I think I just realised I sort of have an uneven amount and want to fix it um, of the smaller ones. And I used those pattern papers, one that I used in the background and that lined one that I really like as well, that pink paisley one I had out in the beginning. Now that pink paisley one was sitting there originally because I couldn't decide if I was going to use that as the paper layers, like the matting for the photos, or as a 12 by 12 paper mat. Um, like cut down this basil marshmallow and stick it. I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. Um, but I really liked the way the oxide ink, the packaging technique worked on this one and, and it just sort of fell into place with the background. So I left it and didn't do the matting, the big matting, if that makes sense. Now I do go through and pop these circular um, pieces that I cut out onto some of these little foam dots just to give, again, a bit of dimension and a bit of interest to the page because I don't add a lot of embellishments. I realised that with the background and the circular pieces, I didn't want to embellish this page too much. Um, I added, wanted to add some elements that, again, like I said, that mood board, that circular pattern, the blues, um, I knew it wouldn't have a lot, um, but I didn't, so I didn't want to, uh, so I wanted to make sure what I did add was interesting as such. So I've gone through, I've added those. I used wet glue to stick down my photos because of the wet media, mixed media background. I'm going through my little tub of random embellishments here. If you're a regular Scrapper Names fan, you'll know that that's my tub that follows me around everywhere, my desk, my trolley, wherever, that i just too lazy to organise where they go, so they just go in there. And I've resorted my embellishments, which you will see on Thursday. In a few days, I have a craft room tour. And into these little containers, or well, this one's a big one, um, and I sort my embellishments by colour. So I went through this one, which has my blues and greens in it, and found some, um, I did have some circular sort of these acetate pieces to put on my layout. Just to add some really big, bold interest pieces. I think I have a bike, I found a blue bike, blue coloured bike as well in amongst there that I pop on because this is, these photos were taken two years ago, so it's 2016, it's an afternoon bike ride to the park, the local park here with the kids, which is great that we've got it close by. And it was perfect because this was the next sort of photo. I'm trying to get through my photos chronologically as best as possible. So it was perfect to grab it out. Went with the round circular theme, had the blues, so blue colour, so it was perfect. Just adding some, I didn't add a lot of journaling, just a little bit down the bottom with the date. Then I thought the, the, um, the layout needed a bit of grounding with just the real stark white and blue 
this to the, the page so I added this little doodly black doodly border as you can see I did add the title which is again sticking to that blue color theme using those um, blue sparkly glittery stickers and it's just round and round and I really loved how this layer as simple as this layout is I think it's really it looks really cool I'm really really happy with it um, and even my kids really liked it actually when they came in and saw it after I'd done it so yeah so I hope you've enjoyed my my challenge Tuesday first one in a while don't forget to hit the like button any questions leave me in the comments and don't forget to subscribe it always is nice to see new subscribers on my channel and I'll see you again very soon I've got a few videos this week so stick around thanks very much for watching bye